so beautiful to see you today. I hope you intentionally came. Can I tell you something? It's only when you are going to somewhere important and it's only when what you have to do is important that you rise early. Just rising early tells something about you, tells a story about you. Just rising early. Not rising early. The time of your rising every day. And you know what? You may say you are not working in a bank. You may say you are not in charge of CBN in Nigeria. You may say you are not the CEO of Binance. <laughs> but you know what? You are the CEO of the company that you are. Absolutely. You are not just a general manager of your life. Perhaps you are the the sole administrator soul the sole manager of your life how successful is your company and which is which company am I talking about you <laughs> so you may sit down and say I don't have anything doing shut up you have something doing you have something doing running your life Absolutely. The greatest company on earth is not Apple. It's not Google. It's not mobile. The greatest company on earth is your life. The most complex organization to run on earth is not United Nations organization. It's not the United States government. The most complex organization to steward on earth is your personal life do you know why that is so because without people who steward their lives people who govern and administer their lives there will be no united nation organization there is no un just an assemblage of people who represent nation and there is no nation just a people trapped in a particular geographical region <laughs> made to live together by common interest so there is no success on earth until there is a success of some individual one person the reason Nigeria is like this so we are talking about budgets in Nigeria and we don't know how much budget is how many trillion? It's because of individuals who cannot govern themselves, who are not honest with themselves, who cannot run their individual lives, who are meant to run a nation. <laughs> That's it. That's it. Everything boils down to you. The day you get it right with you, the world is a better place. Your greatest contribution to the world is not an invention. It's you. Invention is only because you have made something out of your life. I have been interested the past about 15 years. I've been interested in studying, finding out how people succeed on earth. I met Christ a few years ago. I started reading the Bible. So the Bible is just Bible. But real life gives you opportunity to apply Bible. So I've been interested in studying real life. So I've read books. And I don't like mentioning the books I've read because you will say you are a pastor. I've spent a whole lot of time reading books about the military. <laughs> about scientists about politicians I've read biographies I've read history I've read a couple of stuff and I'm still trying to my interest has been how does it work on earth how does it look like to succeed on earth because God gave us birth in his son 
and give the earth for us to possess and have dominion while waiting for Christ to come. I usually tell people a Christian who is born again and goes to heaven at the end of it but did not succeed on earth was a useless Christian on earth. Useless on earth. So you can be a born again, you are so pure, you are so holy but useless. I say useless. So you have to wake up to the understanding that you are in charge of a, the most complex organization, the most important administration, the most crucial government. Please, your life is important. Otherwise, Christ will not die. Christ did not die for us. Christ died for me. Christ died for you. Christ died for the individual. Those who accept him, individuals. That's how important you were. If you were the only human being on earth, for God to still do on earth what he wanted to do with human being, Christ will still die for you alone. That's how important you are. So just, just check your, check your, let's do reality check about how successful you are now and your hope in success. Your rising. How do you rise? When do you rise? You know, I'll keep coming to tell you about this every day until you get so angry with me and then pay attention to what I'm talking about. You're rising. I, I listen to, sorry, I will soon teach. I'm sorry. You know, I just come, when I see you, I just feel like talking. Just feel excited to talk because... I preach all the sermons. Do you even understand it? Do you even remain? No, no. Let's just talk about you. I've listened to husbands who talk to me about their, their helpless wives. Wives who cannot wake up in the morning and take care of children. Wives who don't know when to go to bed and rise. Wives who wait until the food they cooked last night or two days ago. They don't, they don't know whether you can preserve food. I've listened to young women talk about their husbands who just do nothing except pressing phone. And who just lie down in bed until the last person comes back from the day's work is still sleeping. These are men and women who don't have any reason to be alive and who don't have any reason to, to, to add, to, who have nothing to add to other people's lives. If you don't have anything doing, just know that you have the greatest thing to do. You. Do you. Talk to somebody and tell somebody, please start doing you. Yeah. Rise. Rise early. Rise and think. Rise and pray. Rise and cry. Oh. <laughs> you laugh like cry. If you have reason to cry, wake up and cry. <laughs> If crying is, is what is needed, just wake up, but do something. Wake up. Employ yourself. Do something with your life. Please. Please. Your life is needed. Somebody will want to depend on your life. One woman is praying, hoping you will be her husband. That means your life. One man is hoping and praying you will be his wife, that is your life. Your life is what brings family. It's what brings organization. Your life is what brings mighty corporate bodies. The Silicon Valley in the United States of America is a testament of lives of individuals who wake up to pursue ad the adventure of innovation, creation and invention and we consume. We press phone, we don't know how it works. What are you doing with your life? Just start doing your life by just rising. If your father did not send you to school, rise early enough to learn ABC. I have one of my children, I am not, I am not able, to, I have not made up my mind to send him to school yet. 
pastor don't know of any school that will be ready at this moment to take care of him he has not gone to school but he's one of the best students i have ever seen in this entire life this guy is running his life this guy is mad at us he wants to learn and nobody's able to keep pace with his hunger to learn ah that it makes me real he sits at home and he's ahead he's ahead of classes he has not yet attended just by being himself at home just rise you can you can learn abc and start reading in one year and start writing you can do examination and you didn't go to school you can become a lawyer and you can become anything you can reinvent yourself just by rising and paying attention to yourself rising and knowing what to do with your life on a particular day that is success you've not yet done anything yet but that's where you are that you are rising to face one aspect of your life one single thing it may be little but you are doing it please rise early why am i saying that this is rising stars assembly we the the hunger in this assembly is to make is to put fire on the bottom of people to make them rise so when i come and i just feel like i don't preach like normal churches because your attitude doesn't tell me you are rising and then when next 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 sunday let me see you let me see you just you hold one other fool no not a fool you don't have any fool around you you grab somebody by the hand and say follow me he say where are you going to he say you are following me to somewhere and you sit the person down and when the person is done being insulted by me he say thank you very much and another day so you hold just drag people who don't know where they are going to drag them there you carry them on their head on your head so just drag somebody it's not enough to the one word. do you know last night it's true it's true it's true witches don't go out without taking their their fellow the new people they have initiated I was told the story of a lady who called somebody to make her hair and the boyfriend is a cultist and she's a cultist and they are gathered around to initiate the young man in a hotel where she went to make make up somebody people are desperate to drag people into death and destruction and yet and you talk about God being your father and the way you sit you are so ashamed of even sitting here there's no investment. Where are you going to? So drag somebody. Do you understand what I mean? Do you know what it means to drag somebody? There are many ways of dragging someone. Some people you pull them here. Some people you hold them here. Some people you hold them in the neck. Come, let me show them another way. Oh, this is how you. <laughs> Father, in the name of Jesus, let somebody rise today rise to your feet lift up your two hands say i am the one i am rising again shout it louder say i am the one i am rising again and rising all over and 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 all over say there is no end to my rising arise from yesterday's mistake arise from yesterday's failure arise from the missteps of the past arise from toxic energies arise from disappointment arise from failure say i am rising hallelujah be seated today i want to talk about the power of experience and how you prepare for experience and the reason why we have been talking about experience because this week traditionally in the in the Christian world, traditionally, this Sunday is called Palm Sunday, and this week is called Holy Week. And by the grace of God, we are trusting God to visit us with extraordinary experience from Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Next Sunday is Easter Sunday. Experience. Shout experience. experience is as a result of personal encounter write it down a personal encounter with a situation or with a person 
a personal encounter with a situation, with a circumstance, with a person, with an environment gives you experience. Experience is how something has affected and impacted you personally. That's experience. How something, somebody, has affected and impacted you personally. Personally. And the community of those who are impacted, affected by such encounters, become the collective, the association. The fellowship of those who share a common experience. So experience arises from encounter. Have you taken that? Encounter brings about experience. When you have a negative encounter with somebody or in, an, in a circumstance, in a place, it means you have a negative experience and when you are reporting personally there are those who have traveled to places some people travel to Nigeria some white people you listen to foreigners talk about Nigeria some people say I will never go back to Nigeria and they will share the last time the only time I went to Nigeria I went to Africa this is what happened to me this is what happened to me this is how it affected me. This is how it impacted me. And I will never go back to Nigeria. By the grace of God, many years ago, how many years? 2005. 2000, that's 19 years ago. I had an opportunity to facilitate an international conference with an American priest. We were the only two priests. He was the head of the American delegation, I was the head of Nigerian delegation. And I was just less than one year as a priest. One of those funny experiences that helped us to grow. So there is a priest, Farah Stanboksk, who was at that time was in Washington, D.C., visited Nigeria for the first time, his first time in Africa. And we were somewhere in the southeast. And we had such an amazing experience together in that place he went back to the US and he was sick for months by the time I was able to reach him he talked about food poison how he had to fight for his life but he was just one of the Ameri one of the one of the Americans who were part of that conference there was Dr. Bob who will come every year and other white guys, medical people, paramedic people, who will come. And these guys, they loved the experience of being, of being in Nigeria. <laughs> they just loved the experience of coming back and coming back and enjoying a local stuff's delicacies. But Farah Stanbox came once. <laughs> and for him, he was done with Africa. <laughs> So by the next year, we had that same conference. <laughs> that of, but as that box will not try to come again. He will not show face in Nigeria. Other Americans and newer ones came, joined us in the conference again. And it was an exciting experience. What's the difference between these individuals I've mentioned? Personal what? Experience. Encounters that led to experience. Experience stands you out. Experience gives you personal story and personal testimony. Oh, I thought you would write that down. Experience does what? Gives, stands you out. Gives you personal story and personal testimony. So you don't adopt the stories of others. People had negative experience. People were dying 
it's not your death. In the place of people dying, you can be the only one living. It all depends on your experience. I pray in the name of Jesus that this week, that universally in the body of Christ we celebrate the memory of the suffering, the death and the resurrection of the anointed of God. HaMeshaya Yeshua, the Christ who is Jesus. I pray that you will have personal encounter giving you personal experience. Somebody can give birth at 60. Absolutely. At 65, 70, somebody can be a mother or father. If you can just have the required experience. An encounter will give you experience. I pray today that the angels of God's encounter, they surround you. I pray that the invisible hands will touch you. Amen. I pray that the immovable one will move you. Amen. I pray that the breath of the Almighty will be will breathe upon you Amen. and cause you to wake up into an experience that will make you stand out and will give you a personal testimony and story in the name of Jesus Christ. Be seated. So, First John chapter one, verse one to four. I want to talk about two things today: the power of experience and preparing for experience. In the next service, I will focus more and pay attention more to preparing for an experience, preparing to have your own personal experience. Don't forget. That these words are spoken so that you can re receive, receive, and prepare you to receive. First John chapter 1 from verse 1 to 4. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard. Say we have heard. Which was from the beginning, which we have heard. The one who speaks is John, the beloved. The beloved and he's speaking on behalf of other apostles so he's talking about shared experience he's talking about what brought them together so when we when he says we is a community of individuals who share a common experience and what is the experience the experience is that which was from the beginning. So this is eternal experience. The word eternal in Greek means then, now, and tomorrow. Forever. It means continuously. It means ancient, before time began. It means forever. Continuous. Continuous in the past, continuous in the present, continuous in the future. This is an experience. And the individuals who had this experience become the we that the scripture is talking about. Which we have heard. Which we have seen with our eyes. This is experience. What is at stake here is not just that that which was from the beginning has become the life of people. Is that people saw experience. People had experience. What brought me into the ministry is because I had experience. I cannot doubt my call. I may not really like my call. I don't know who likes his call. And I suspect anybody who really likes his call, I suspect that his call is not too serious. The call scares you. Jonah understands or understood what it means to have experience of a call. When you have experience of your call, you run the opposite direction. So if you see people who run in the direction, say, slow down. 
Some people na na them they call God. Not be God they call them. Sir, it's not easy to love your call. But I cannot doubt my call because I heard, I saw, which we which we have heard. This is how you how the eternal thing, how the eternal one brings you into a place of personal experience hearing. I pray in the name of Jesus, you will hear. Yeah. Your bone will hear. Yeah. Your heart will hear. Yeah. Your mind will hear. Yeah. Your emotion will hear. Yeah. Your relationship will hear. Yeah. Your marriage will hear. Yeah. Experience. So if your marriage is not beautiful, don't give up. There is an experience that comes from hearing that changes marriage. If your life currently doesn't make sense, don't hang yourself. There is, there is the eternal, that which was from the beginning, that if you see, if you hear, it changes everything, gives you a different experience. That marriage becomes a different experience. That business becomes a, your, that life, that life that struggles, that life that falls apart, that life that cannot hold water turns into something else experience shout experience which we had which we have seen with our eyes your eyes will see absolutely i say your eyes will see i say your eyes will see glory to god your eyes will see seeing brings you into experience i'm not saying i'm not talking about the seeing that is just casual, performatory, and just, oh, just say, no. A scene that is seen into the unseen, a scene that comes as a result of revelation. So, oh, goodness. Do you know there are doors everywhere? Did you know that? That where you stand and call a wall, if your eyes can see, there is a door there. There is a scripture in Genesis about the woman called Hagar. Glory to God. Look for it for me. Hagar had been driven away, sent away by Abraham because the wife Sarah could no longer accommodate Hagar because Hagar had given birth to Ishmael and had become arrogant. And that's not all. Eventually, Isaac came. And when Isaac came, Ishmael mocked when Isaac was being celebrated. Mocked like, what nonsense? What? Because he was not celebrated. The mother was not celebrated because of the unique circumstance that they found their lives in. And so when Isaac was born, this great feast was made. And the scripture says, Ishmael mocked and scoffed and insulted the whole, the whole situation. And Sarah said, no, we cannot, this, this man will not share the inheritance with my son. Send this boy away and send this slave girl away. And Abraham, being a good man, did that. And God said, there's no problem. The scripture says, Hagar was in the desert. And when the little water that they had, had been spent, Ishmael began to cry. And she walked away and sat somewhere else not wanting to see the death of the son an angel had encounter with her and she had an experience and God heard the voice of the Lord Genesis chapter 21 verse 17 then the angel of God called to Hagar out of heaven and said to her what ails ear <laughs> Hagar, fear not, for God has heard the voice of the Lord where he is. Next verse. Arise, lift up the Lord and hold him with your hand, for I will make him a great nation. Read the next verse, everyone. Wait. The scripture didn't say, then God dug a well of water. That's not what the scripture is saying. God did not dig a well of water. God gave her an experience. 
Everybody in that place just saw a desert. And until that experience, she saw a waterless place, good enough only for death. But an encounter gave her an experience, and that experience is water in the place of dryness. That's the power of experience. How dare you plan to die? Because they say the time is, the times are so hard for everybody. How dare you plan to fail? Because they say nobody makes it. How dare you succumb to the story of everyone? There is a personal story waiting for you in the place of personal encounter. And that personal story will come from a, an experience. Say, God opened his eyes. Who told you that there are no doors where you are stranded? Who told you there is no liberty where you are bound? Who told you there is no healing where you are sick? Are there no longer bam? In Gilead, if you ask God, he will say there is bam in Gilead. Halaboshata. Speak in the Holy Ghost. Lord, give me an experience. I don't know what sickness you are going through right now. I don't know what you are sitting upon. Or I don't know what sits upon you. I don't know what you are holding on to. And I don't know what holds on to you. That which we have heard under Poliata. That which we have seen with our own eyes. The one that was from the beginning. The eternal one can give you an experience that will turn hopelessness into the oasis of glory. Under Poliata City. That will turn the day of hopeless, the day of death. Oh Jesus of Nazareth. A young man is not in church today. A young man who gave a testimony here. One of the most difficult days of his life. That everything failed him. He talked about when we were in Ibom Hall. You have heard his testimony before. The day he testified, twins, two boys that I still love till tomorrow. Where was them? Talked about business failing, everything failing. Nothing making sense. Life hopeless and useless. He was completely frustrated, helpless. And it came from the last point. That day was a chain of disappointment. One disappointment led to another. One he was in a relay race of disappointment. And it was a baton in the hand of the relay runner called disappointment. Disappointment handing him over to another. And another disappointment preparing him to meet another. And the last encounter was we were having a meeting. It was a Tuesday. And there was dinner for champions. And he saw people uh, trooping into Ibobo Hall and cast back. That said, so what is this one? A political meeting. Somebody said, oh, they do church there. And he walked in and sat down. And as he sat, as he sat down, I brought a word that made sense to him. There in that place, God gave him an experience. He received the name of his company. Few years later, when he testified, his business was moving from Uyo to Portugal. He had employed people, established. He had made money and he was he's still making money. An experience changed the day of a hopeless <laughs> life into oh, don't you know you are sitting where there is well? Kalavo Shata. The only thing required is that your eyes may open. Won't your name be Bartimaeus today? Bartimaeus means the son of Timaeus. You can be the son of disappointment. You can be the son of pain. You can be the son of shame. The son of blindness. So Bartimaeus, Bar, Ben, Timaeus. The son of Timaeus. Whose son are you? Okay, what do we know about Bartimaeus? Bartimaeus was born blind. He was a blind man who sat by the roadside. That's everything about Bartimaeus. And he was covered by the garment of begging because his being the son of Timaeus and being a, a blind man gave him only one profession. The profession of depending on the people who could not change his circumstance. When he had an opportunity, he asked for an experience. 
Say, grant that I may see. Don't give me money. People have given me money before, but I still sit here. Receive experience. Receive an experience. For every Bartimaeus, there is something that will change your location. For every Bartimaeus, there is something that will change your location. There is no son of Timaeus without a story. And there is no son of Timaeus who meets Christ without an experience. Ah! That your eyes will be open to see that which was from the beginning. And that your ears will hear what will cause your life to live again in the name of Jesus. Shout Jesus! Give me my own personal experience. Hey God, who gave you water? Nobody gave me water. My eyes were open. Halamonda taprela kato. You are thinking of a politician who will give you water. You are thinking of a man that will give you water. But God is thinking about if your eyes can just be open, you will fetch your water. You are looking for who gives you water. But he wants to open your eyes so that you can fetch your water. Receive your sight. Receive your sight. Receive your sight. Receive your sight. Let your emotions see. Let your mind see. Let your spirit see. Halabo shanda tata. Lande prala moson de pray handa ta. Hando tomande ya tobra la sonda ta. Rande kato. You are looking for water, but it's looking for the for your eyes to open. Halasi hando. Say Lord. Don't give me water. Open my eyes to fetch the water. So Lord, don't send me water giver. Lord, give me sight to fetch the water. For in the sight of God, water is already running. Poverty is a lie. Death is a lie and a robber. Emptiness is a lie. There is a well in front of you. All you need, your eyes. Will you speak like Bartimaeus, Lord, that I want to see? Hey, God did not know what to ask for, but God opened her eyes. Whether you know what to ask for or not, let your eyes be open in the name of Jesus. Hello. Take some time and ask God for encounter. Oh, Lord, I want to see your glory I want to offer sacrifice your eyes can be open and you graduate your eyes can be open and you go back and succeed where you fell your eyes can be open and you're free from chains you're free from yokes, free from spell. Cry. I want my experience. Give me the encounter that opens their sights. Did you know that even though your eyes are open, there are levels of sin. There is another level that makes you see something in nothing. There is another level of sight that makes you see somewhere in nowhere. There's another level of sight that makes you see glory in confusion. That makes you see gold in the ashes. Oh, say Lord, I want to see. Want to see. La bosha ta la masikata. I want to see. I want to see and drink the water of liberty. I want to see and drink the water of purity. 
I can preach forever and your life does not change but when your eyes are open chains will fall when your eyes are open addiction will go when your eyes are open foulness will go impurity will go the law let me see my well let me see my well let me see let me see the blessing of my children you have children and you keep calling them useless who told you God will give you a useless useless set of children oh Lord I want to see your glory I want to offer a sacrifice of praise I've been waiting for too long to see. I've been waiting for too long to see. I have seen those who abuse me. I have seen those who molest me. I have seen those who reject me. I have seen those who hate me. Oh Lord, I want to see. I want to see well. I want to see well of celebration in this desperate time of rejection. In this desperate time of degeneration, I want to see. I want to see the door that leads to that place that my life will manifest. Don't let me leave your presence. Don't let me walk away from this week without an encounter, without an experience. Halabo shatala, the sacrifice. Oh Lord, I want to see your glow. I want to offer the sacrifice of you. What do you see? God asked Jeremiah, Jeremiah, what do you see? Woman, what are you seeing now? Man, what are you seeing now? Son, what do you see now? What you see matters. Because what you see can define the boundary between life and death. What do you see? Say, Lord, I don't, I don't want to see. I don't want to see what life has been showing me. Ah, Hagar saw. And the cries of the baby broke her heart. Hagar saw. And the fear of failure killed her before time. Hagar saw. But there is another scene which is an encounter. It brings an experience of liberty. It brings an experience of freedom. It brings an experience of wholeness. It brings an experience of salvation. See now. Let your eyes see now. Let your eyes see now. Let your eyes see now. I want to offer the sacrifice. I want to see. I want to see. Lord, I want to see. Lord, I want to see. Do not stop talking. Say, Lord, prepare me for an anchor. I want to see. I want to see. Halabo Shata. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon. And our hands handled. Oh, that as you see, your hand will handle. That is an experience. You will handle your own. You will handle. You will handle your own. Your portion. You will handle. You will handle your own. Yes, you will handle. You will handle. You will handle. You will handle. 
John said, that which we have heard, which we have seen, which we looked upon, that which we have handled, the word of life. Can I tell you something? I can preach every day and you are still in that condition. Still in that sin, still in that bondage, still in that guilt, still in that hopelessness. Can preach a thousand, but an experience makes you handle the word. Turns the word into what your hand handles. Turns the word into what you hear. Turns the word into what you see, what you look upon. I can preach and all you see is me, all you hear is me. All you look upon is me, all you judge is me. But experience turns you into looking upon the word of life. Handling the word of life. Seeing the word of life. Receive that. And you unlock your spiritual door. Come out into sight. Come out of darkness into light. And you unlock your spiritual door. Come out from the into wholeness and you unlock your spiritual door come into your personal testimony in Jesus name be seated just give me another few minutes thank you be seated experience gives you authority and position in life you see when Hagar had that experience with God if you go back there if you go back there, what she never knew about herself happened. Can I see the next verse? The next verse, come on. So God was with the lad and he grew and dwelt in the wilderness and became an, an experience. So we now say God was with that lad on account of that experience. Nobody will recognize God in your life except through the vehicle of experience. When you have experience, your husband will know God is with you. Too many times we beg husbands to come to church. Too many times we beg wives to pray. Too many times we beg children to fellowship. Your personal experience will make your children see that God is with you. Your personal, your personal experience will make your husband humble and speechless and without any option other than following you into God. Sometimes we just pray and pray and pray. We begin to ask God experience. Encounter that produces experience that will give us a scriptural verse and God was with that love. This is what makes Paul, the apostle, different from all the apostles. If you look at, if you, if you study the scripture, the New Testament, Paul is a man who imposed his apostleship upon the church. We have not heard any time that just guys said, Paul, you are my apostle, but he gave him a mission. Send him out. That's all. Jesus did not go to tell Peter, I have called Paul. Jesus did not go to assemble the other 12 and say, you know, I'm sorry, I didn't tell you ahead. You know, there's this man who used to persecute you that I have now turned around. Accept him. He left him with just one thing. Experience. And that experience gave him a place in the apostolic table. Gave him history and story that can never and will never be ignored. Listen to his own story. So right now, if people don't, don't take you seriously, right? Nobody takes you seriously. You say something, nobody cares. You, you talk about what you, your future, nobody cares. And you talk, nobody, you want people to be your friend and nobody wants to be. You want people to connect you, nobody wants to call. Uh, you, you need an experience that will cause people to see God was with that lad. Paul had a 
had an experience. And after that, others had no option but to accept him, to give him right hand of fellowship, experience. Whatever you are going through will honor an experience from God. Seek an experience. Christianity is, a, is an experience of God in human life. It's not doctrine. Galatians chapter 1 verses 11 from verse 11 to 17. This is where I close. Galatians chapter 1 verse 11 to 17. But I make known to you brethren that the gospel which was preached by me is not according to man. It's not a man that favored me. Not a man that taught me. So many people will say, I, my so, so so person is my father in the Lord. No experience. Many people feel ministry is a fellowship of those under father in the Lord. So people do all that they can to have some big names on top of their head. That's not experience. The experience of that man is not your experience. The experience of that man will only help you as far as your own experience can take you. Experience. 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 Recently somebody, one of the ministers here that many people will know, walked into my office with a seat last Sunday and told me of an encounter she had Mentioned the, man, the name of the man who ordained me and she has never heard that name in true life. Say, so I had an encounter with a man that mentioned the name of the person that ordained me and she did not even know. Say, so she, she doesn't know the man. She has never heard that name. But the man was an ancient buried man. Very ancient. And do you know what? How the person introduced me to her Say, Akpan Yahweh. Akpan Yahweh. Introduced me. To, so, she's, there are many ministers who sit down here. No experience. <laughs> no experience of this call. So, they are here. According to convenience. They are here looking at other people. They see nothing into the mystery. And they say they are ministers. And so they need you to carry Cain, to run after them, to chase them. But she, she had an encounter, me, me, me think two things, an ancient personality that talks about ancestry of the call. Two, calling, introducing Akban Yahweh, that so before she began to hear me saying, oh, um, a lot of young people will say, uh, name my son, so, 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 Yahweh. So if you bring your child for child dedication, don't add Yahweh to the name. I will not honor it. Because you don't understand. You don't have revelation. So you just hear, oh, Mbiet Yahweh. Ukara Yahweh. make on Yahweh. And you say, you can just, you don't, you don't sit down. You don't have, you have to tell me what mystery, what revelation do you have? So you hear and you do. Like what happens in Nigerian music. When you hear tung tung bakbara, tung tung bakbara, everywhere you go, go to, tung tung bakbara. So everywhere you go to, somebody is selling Maggi, everywhere is Maggi, and all of that. No understanding. So you don't try that on this altar. He say, Akban Yahweh, the firstborn. Is deep mystery that we cannot talk about, and she she has testimony for it. So until we came here, this is how it was. This is how it had been. This is how it was supposed to be by an arrangement. But my connection with you has brought about this and this, and this is how it is now. It is an experience. 
an experience. It's an experience. It's an experience. I pray in the name of Jesus that this week, from this moment, you have your own experience. In God. He said, not according to man. You can serve according to man, be seated. You can church according to man. You can marry according to man. If God speaks to me that somebody sitting down here is the wife of so, 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 so person, or the husband of so, so, so person, if I have a release to say, okay, pray about this person, just pray about this person, you don't have permission to marry until you have personal experience in Revelation. No man who saw your husband or saw your wife will be your, will be assistant husband or assistant wife. Nobody helps another to marry. So you cannot marry based on a revelation of a pastor. One young man here came to me and said, uh, and I already know this, the ecosystem he was talking about, a prophetess told me, this is this person, is my wife. And so we have started dating. I said, you are a fool. A prophetess. Are you the one who gave her her own husband? You started dating because a prophetess said it. A prophetess, which God does she represent? Do you know God? Go to God and find out. Do you start dating and say we are preparing? We are talking marriage because every revelation a man gives you should lead you to personal encounter. Go and ask God, did this come from you? Where did it come from? That's the benefit. That's the privilege of being a child of God. So you go to churches, pastors, network people of Rido Yemi, Rido Yemi. And you also see people, they wake up one day and they are mad and they run away to another church. And the marriage ended in the church because it was a church arranged marriage. But it's me and Zufen. Personal experience. If God speaks to me concerning you, I tell you, just one thing is left. Go and confirm whether it's from God. If you don't have capacity to confirm you are not yet a child of God, that means whatever I prophesy can never prosper you. Because if it comes from God, it needs God to prosper. Write it down. If a word comes from God, that word will need God for you to prosper. So if you don't have God, every prophecy will eventually lead to failure. Every prophecy that comes from God to bless you will need God in your life to sustain it. Otherwise, one day, it will fail you. Paul says, I did not receive it from a man. If it came from God, it needs God to prosper. That's what I ask you to write down. For I neither received it from man, nor was I taught it. But it came through the revelation of Jesus Christ. Experience. For you have heard of my former conduct in Judaism. How I persecuted the church of God beyond measure and tried to destroy it. And I advanced in Judaism beyond many of my contemporaries in my own nation. Being more exceedingly zealous for the traditions of my father. But when it pleased God, say God. Who separated not us, me. God has separated you for a life, but an experience launches you into that life. So Paul was separated. Look at that scripture. Say, Who separated me from my mother's womb? So from the womb of the mother, Paul, before Jesus died on the cross, Paul was already a preacher of the gospel. Paul was already an apostle. Paul was already an apostle, but it was an experience that launched him into the apostleship. Everything God has appointed you for, everything God has destined you for, everything God has set you for, everything that God has apportioned you for, everything that God made you for, is waiting for an experience. That experience will be with a man. That experience will be in a place. That experience will be in an encounter. That experience will be in an environment. And so, you need to ask God, open my eyes. There are men you meet, you know you are supposed to stay around them. There are places you go to, you know that is where you belong. There are things you see, you say that, an experience. An experience. An experience. 
Somebody sitting down here listening to me. Talking about an office in government. Oh, from the beginning, people have been telling me this, telling me this. And he came to me and said, okay, you go and pray. After you pray, you bring a seat as honor unto God. And I will bless you. Then you go. But you will go only on the basis of your experience. You can no longer say, this is what pastor said. You cannot even say what I say. You have to say what you have experienced. If you were apportioned for it, if you were set up for it, then wait for the encounter, look for the encounter, ask God for the encounter. Cry for the encounter. But when it pleased God who separated me from my mother's womb and called me through his grace to reveal his son in me that I might, pre I might preach him among the Gentiles, I did not immediately confer with flesh and blood, nor did I go up to Jerusalem to those who were apostles before me. But I went to Arabia and returned again to Damascus experience experience put him in the place of history experience put him in the place of his destiny being separated in, in the mother's womb that is destiny but for destiny to become to become your reality many people were destined to be great but they are begging and eating from from the gutter many people were destined to change lives but they are busy destroying lives many people were destined to lift people to raise and change lives and turn cities upside down in the gospel they are busy prostituting around and experience experience launches you into your destiny rise you're going to pray this prayer on Thursday rise let me announce to you on Thursday our Easter camp for experience of redemption begins at 4.30 p.m. If you don't have money, good for you. Because you can come and come here from that Thursday and live here on Sunday. Just come with something to brush your mouth. Just come. They will, be, they will look for buckets. Somewhere you will take your bath in the bush. Just come. Get ready to sleep on seats, on chairs for a few days. Like Jacob wrestled with him through the night. On Thursday, camp begins. Thursday evening, Thursday night. Every midnight, we will have, a, we have experience, encounter for experience. And on Friday morning, afternoon, afternoon is communion. Night experience again. Saturday morning session. And then we break camp for people to prepare for Sunday. And then we have the resurrection celebration from 8 a.m. on Sunday. All of this message about experience have been to prepare you that the time has come and this come you will tell God give me my own experience of redemption. What is it that you set me apart from my mother's womb for? I will no longer wait. I'm ready. I'm ready. Can I tell you after we went to Oron and came back I told you on so last Sunday I was given two later words can I tell you what the word is? I was told go. I was told, just simple, go. And I have told you that once we go to Oro, something will happen. So spiritually, divinely, that's been an approval. Go. I was not, I was not told any other. Few other things in our revelation, they are for me, not for you. But I can share this with you. And can I tell you something? Go. Go and marry. Absolutely. So everything, the oil flows from the head. Once the head receives the oil, it's a matter of time the beds will receive it. It's a matter of time the caller will receive it. I can speak in advance. Go, go and prosper. I can go in this camp. Have your own experience. Have your own encounter. Go into your health. Go into your wealth. Go. It's an experience. It's waiting for you. Go into your transformation. Go into your liberty. Go into your release. Go. It's time to change and change the world. Lift up your two hands and close your eyes. Somebody here that you have not yet submitted to the one who gives encounter. It is God who opened the eyes of Hagar. There may be, there may be Sarah. Sarah who does not care, who hates you and rejects you. There may be Abraham who accepts to send you away. But there is God who has made provision of water in the desert. 
and it's ready to open your eyes eyes closed hands lifted speak to Jesus personally if you are a child of God in this place tell him say thank you Jesus you are the encounter of God I have you give me the experience for the next level next level of holiness next level of consecration so the power of consecration is that experience cannot go far except it is built upon consecration whatever it is as a child of God it means you already have some experience I say Lord give me another experience of consecration consecration that will keep my greatness consecration that will make me stable and set me apart for what I have been called and somebody who has never accepted him as Lord and Savior if you know your sins are not yet forgiven you don't have peace in your heart and if Jesus comes this moment you are not sure of spending eternity with him wherever you are just call that name Jesus tell him I'm sorry for all my sins tell him I repent you don't need to come out today we don't have time for that but just tell him I repent I turn and if you are a child of God here you had used your will to go back to evil and go back to the things you are rejected say Lord give me an experience of change I return to you mm, open the eyes of my Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see. I want to see. Please, you don't need to sing. Just speak to God. Just speak to God. Lord Jesus, please come into this life. Say, Lord Jesus, come into this life. Come into this life. Let me experience salvation today. Let me experience forgiveness. Show me that you forgive. Show me that you save me. Change my heart. Change my life. As you pray, you can lay your hand on any part of your body that needs healing. That is healing all in this place. To see you leave. Terra. We sing your I was as walking around doing good as you're walking around doing good as you're walking around doing good do not forsake. As you are walking about healing the sick, as you are walking about changing stories, as you are walking about doing, do not forsake me. Oh. As you are walking about doing, as you are walking about doing. As your word, sickness is healed, diseases are gone, spells are broken, chains are broken, hearts are changed, lives are changed. Turn around, mighty 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 turn around. Turn around in business, turn around in consecration, turn around in ministry, turn around in connection, turn around in fruitfulness, turn around in marriage. Turn around in vision. Turn around in promotion. Turn around in appointment. Turn around. I ask experience will visit you. Let experience visit you. Let experience look for you. Let experience locate you. Holy Ghost locate. Holy Ghost locate. Holy Ghost please locate somebody. Locate somebody. Locate somebody. Locate somebody. Locate somebody. As you are walking around, as you are, you're going to cry for an experience, cry for an encounter. 
he's still in the business of changing garment he's still in the business of lifting somebody he's still in the business of changing somebody he's still in the business of encouraging or building he's still raising mighty men he's still raising oaks in this generation he's still building mountains from nothing As you're walking about doing as you're walking about changing stories as you're walking about doing be filled with the spirit of God lay your right hand on your forehead Receive the confirmation and the conviction of the Spirit. Holy Spirit, please come and give multiple touch. Let this word become the eternal word that they can handle. They can look onto, they can see, they can hear. <sighs> take away addiction, take away depression. Depression, I rebuke you. Get out in the name of Jesus Christ cancerous cells dry up in the name of Jesus Christ any part of the body that could not function well I command you in the name of Jesus clear up be made whole be filled with the spirit wave those two hands like God has said to you wave I say wave those two hands like God has said to you wave those hands like God has healed wave those hands like God has changed you Wave those hands like God is faithful. Open your mouth as you as you wave, begin to say, Thank you. Thank you, my experience giver. Thank you, my life lifter. Thank you, my story changer. Thank you. Thank you. Go ahead and celebrate it. Go ahead and celebrate.